A very happy 2020 and welcome to the first episode of the year of the best of pedal shift on this episode. You know, this one was kind of a funny one. I'm going to have to say this is chasing 70 degrees by bicycle. And I'm going to admit to you right now, this was one of those episodes where I was really struggling to find something to talk about. Every once in a while, I just really struggled to find an episode to fill a week. And this was one of them. I stumble upon this one blog post about somebody who figured out how to find a place every single day uh, through the year that would get you to 70 degrees. And I figured you could do that by bicycle. And it was, I thought when I was done recording this, oh, this is this is not going to be a great episode. This is really weird. Well, it's been one of the most popular episodes of the Pedal Shift Project, if you measure it by downloads, of the entire run of the show. So it's probably appropriate to bring back as a best of. I think this is a really funny, interesting episode, and I'm not sure if it's completely practical. I mean, I get all into it, but I will say um, it would be a very interesting tour, and I would be very interested to find out if anybody has ever tried something approaching this, because you certainly would see a lot of North America. That is for darn sure. So anyways, here is episode number 072, Chasing 70 Degrees by Bicycle. You may be hearing slightly different sounds than you're used to, and that's because I am recording live on location from Leopard's Mill Hiker Biker Campsite on the CNO Trail. I am uh, in the midst of finishing up a glorious day of biking. It hit 80 degrees as a high today on February 24th in the Washington, D.C. area. That is bananas. Um, so, of course, I took the gumption. The gumption? Is that, is that, a, is that a phrase? It's not a phrase. Um, I, I uh, took Bellstar and created a new rig where she now rides on the front rack, which is much better and I think is going to be something that's going to be helpful for future tours with her. And I'm out here. I thought I would do this episode, number 72, which is sort of the bonus episode of the month, and uh, do it out here in the wild. You can probably hear the frogs. They're freaking out right now because they think it's spring. And uh, yeah, I just thought you would like the soundscape of everything while I did this. Um, And it's sort of apropos because this episode is a special edition on a year-long North American bike trek chasing 70-degree Fahrenheit average highs. And I got the idea from, I guess, a blog. Yeah, it's a blog, uh, us-climate.blogspot.com. So uh, it is. it was an idea around a road trip um, that chases 70-degree highs as things warm up and then cool down through the year. And it's throughout North America. And what I found to be kind of interesting is that because it's very slow in the beginning and doesn't really pick up speeds until later on in the year, it actually could be done as a bike tour, at least hypothetically. I just thought it would be kind of something interesting to take a look at. So here we go. We take a look at I've got a link in the show notes, and that's, of course, at pedalshift.net slash 072. And uh, it, it, you can see both the, uh, you can also hear the wind pick up here, so hopefully that's not creating too many problems. Oh, by the way, I have a campfire going on too, so you might even be able to hear the crackle of that in the background. Bellstar, of course, has abandoned me, and she's in the tent looking at me while I talk into my iPhone like, like, a, like a caveman. Um, so, uh, take a look at that, the link in the show notes, and you can see the map. Now, as you can tell, it is a very strange route. And the reason is, again, is because what it does is it starts January 1st down way down in South Texas. And it's trying to make sure that no matter where you're at, you are finding an average 70 degree Fahrenheit high uh, uh, as what you're going to have for that day. And you're going to continually move i.e. In, my, in, in this hypothetical, you're going to be trying to be biking to chase those 70 degree high temperatures, which I think is kind of ideal, at least for me. Of course, it's going to get chillier in the evenings and whatnot, but nothing too bad. Oh, here comes Bellstar. So as you start off in uh, south, way, 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 you're, you're about as far south. I think you're in Brownsville, uh, Texas, if you're familiar with Texas. That's pretty much the southernmost point, way, way down south. That is not the southernmost point in the United States. I think that goes to Key West, but um, you're very far south. So you're going to be able to grab that 70 degree normal high temperature down there. And you start to move your way north very, very slowly. In fact, you don't go very far at all between January 1st and February 1st. Very leisurely pace. Uh, You can take days off as, as you ride And in fact, you're going to be moving around and moving around and uh, continue your way up through the state of Texas for basically three full months. Uh, And you don't hit Oklahoma going north until April 1st. So 
if you like the state of Texas, <laughs> this is definitely the route for you. Um, basically, to give yourself three months to go through the state of Texas, as big as it is, that's plenty of time, and it's at a relatively leisurely pace. From the uh, month of April, you actually add a ton more miles. And now is the time when you're going to have to start thinking about some fast forwards, uh, but probably not until June. I think between April and May, you can uh, average enough miles to get basically from North Texas, the uh, Oklahoma border, not terribly far from actually Lawton, Oklahoma, which is where uh, my girlfriend Kimberly is uh, from, a native of that area. Um, you work your way through and across uh, South eastern Oklahoma and across Arkansas, you avoid Tennessee. Actually, you avoid all of Tennessee and you do hit Kentucky at uh, some point, but you go up through southern Illinois, southern Indiana, and work your way across northern Kentucky, right across West Virginia. And I think that'll be a very mountainous uh, 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 climbing type of ride. And that'll get you up into northern Virginia right around May 1st which is a beautiful time to be in that part of the area. You work away uh, through Shenandoah, it looks like, and then up and probably end up on the CNO at some point. And you're working your way across southwestern Pennsylvania, northeastern Ohio, southern Michigan, northern Indiana, then back up into northern Illinois, and you're working your way up into Minneapolis. And you're right around Minneapolis around June 1st. That's a total, those are, that's real bike touring and that's perfectly typical for uh, mileage-wise. Again, chasing those 70-degree highs. Now is when I think you're going to run into a few problems, because from June 1st to July 1st, you've got to get from Minneapolis to basically way up into Yukon. Uh, and and uh, that, I think, that that's a distance that it's just not possible, I think, to be able to do. I think you'll have to do some kind of a fast-forward. So whether that means that you end up taking a train, which would be possible, you could take a train um, basically across, I think, into northern Montana, that would be possible. But this is a, actually a kind of a beautiful ride, so to be able to maximize where you want to be more than anything else, between June 1st and July 1st, you've got to get way up into the Yukon Territory. Then you go up into Alaska and do a bit of a loop and come back down through British Columbia, beautiful ride, uh, just shy, just a little bit to the east of Vancouver, and you end up going down through Seattle, uh, and down, it looks like, on the um, mainland side of Washington State, uh, uh, of Puget Sound, on, on the uh, uh, eastern side of Puget Sound, and work your way down to Portland, Oregon, by August 1st. From there, things slow down dramatically. August 1st to September 1st, you're basically doing the coast from Portland all the way down to just at the California border there. Potentially maybe, uh, oh, I don't know where that would be. It's, it's always, it, it's hard to tell. Um, and then you start working your way back east. And you are going from September 1st to October 1st. You, go, you do a nice loop across uh, all of uh, the state of Oregon, another beautiful ride, across southern Idaho, back up into Montana, and down through uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska. And you end up in uh, central Nebraska October 1st. Beautiful time. October 1st, you wind your way all the way down to November 1st to the Texas-New Mexico border. You can tell things starting to cool down in the rest of the uh, area. You're starting to go south again. And then you work your way back west again <laughs> through New Mexico, Arizona. You end up in Los Angeles December 1st and finally San Diego on December 31st. Whew. What a ride. A crazy, intense ride that would definitely require some fast forwards in parts. Um, the mileage uh, chart I'll, I'll, is, is available actually at that website. Again, link in the show notes. Check that out. But this is a really intriguing idea for those of you who are looking for a year-long adventure. I think that this is possible. Um, and of course, this is chasing average 70-degree highs. Of course, your mileage may vary. I mean, average highs are average for a reason. They're They're some days are really cool, and some days, like today, I think the average high here is somewhere in the low 50s, maybe upper 40s, and we had 80 today. So things can vary tremendously, and of course, weather varies tremendously as well in terms of precipitation and whatnot. But I think that's a fascinating idea, at least to play around with. Maybe you don't want to do this for the full year, but maybe you can take a look at this and be inspired for a ride over a few months. Um, that would be part of a cross-country ride or maybe a partial regional ride. I think that would all be really interesting and very cool. 
So take a look at the at the link in the show notes. That's going to be uh, pedalshift.net slash 072 for us-climate.blogspot.com's uh, really fascinating look at chasing 70 degree temperatures. Thank you for joining. You can find Pedal Shift at pedalshift.net for more great bicycle touring content. You can hear the Pedal Shift Project through Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Opening music courtesy of Jason Kent off his self-titled album. The track is called America. Check out his band Sunfield's latest release, Mono Mono, wherever cool music is available.